हिस्ट्री टेकिंग इन साइकोलॉजी काउंसिलिंग वट डू स्टार्ट विथ ओके टेल मी सम गुड क्वालिटीज ऑफ अ साइकोलॉजी काउंसिलर ऑल द गुड क्वालिटीज विच यू थिंक राइट डाउन इन द वन एंड देन सेंड इट ऑन दिस चैट everyone try to use your brains please write down very good understanding no judgment patience good listener good communicator people like to talk to you people like to listen to you they come to you for advice good storyteller wow that's a good point yeah you have to be good storyteller that's very good active listening help them make the decision when they want compassionate empathy pleasant face smiling face smile on your face okay that's great that's great sometimes empathy you have to be careful if you are like very you know you feel something which others feel so you should not be affected so number one rule in psychology is that you should remember that you are also human being you also have your emotional well being number one priority you should have is you should protect yourself okay so if you are getting affected by a client's emotions if you are feeling depressed after counseling someone if you are not feeling happy this is not good for you okay so uh, you have to feel happy when you do something right very good very good arun very good so history taking typically starts with you should address the client with the client's name you should know the name of the client okay you should know what is the background of the client what is the educational qualification what is the profile what has been the career journey or home journey or motherhood journey who are there in the near family uh, what are the things uh, that is troubling who are the people those are troubling you should know with the names you can note down okay this sometimes you may need to note down the name of the husband and the child because that is something you are going to use in your communication okay so as a good practice initially so you can write down the name of the client the age the city and the husband name because when they tell you about the husband and the children and all don't start asking like what is the name of the husband okay don't be like a clerk okay so it has to be within the story right when she tells you the story you capture those names okay when she says my children you ask what are the age of the children which school they go which class they go what are their names right so you are engaging the client okay so about the client you ask number 2 you talk about yourself that is a very important so whatever you want to talk about yourself 30 seconds you will talk that is going to be something that tells her your background your educational background your skills background that you are a good counselor why she should come to you again right or she should take up counseling from you you will talk those who do internship they learn exactly what they should talk i help them prepare on their own this thing their profile number 3 you ask what is the emotional turbulence going on okay don't ask what is the psychological condition what is the mental condition don't say what is the psychopathy you have those are very traumatic words okay always use a polite word emotional turbulence this is a very good and friendly word people like it she will the client will feel that okay this is the one counselor she is not using mental psycho psychology all those she is using emotional turbulence wow i like this word okay she will get you connected with you and that is objective you have okay so when you say emotional turbulence client will give the diagnosis they have done the google and youtube and all those things they will give direct diagnosis uh, say that don't give me the diagnosis so tell me what are the symptoms that is that that are happening with you what are the symptoms you are facing okay what is what are the emotional turbulence you have right sometimes client may give you the diagnosis because they have visited the psychiatrist then it's okay okay but you still ask like are you taking medication which are the medications you are taking what are the symptoms you have right what is happening on day to day basis okay so 
then what is how, tell me about your routine life tell me about how your day looks like that is very important to know because in that you will understand a lot of stories when you ask how your day looks like right how your week looks like sometimes if you are trying to identify whether it is a bipolar disorder then you may ask how your month looks like so she will say that depression to and then hypomania or mania something you will identify from the story okay so and don't be afraid to ask some questions if you have not understood something you should ask something question can you clarify that ask some examples always try to ask examples okay so if someone says that my husband is a trouble maker my children are trouble maker in laws are trouble maker so try to ask some examples okay there is a trouble at the office someone says there is stress at the office stress at the home so ask give me some examples okay and try to use the local language good dr swati okay so patient feels connected that's correct okay so you learn in english you will talk in the language which the client is comfortable okay so you have asked how your day looks like and everything what are the four points we have covered so far write down all the four points <laughs> very good rapid response okay shruti interesting good then fifth point you ask what are your trigger factors okay so trigger factors may be like for example someone has anxiety or depression or stress trigger factors may be there is no trigger factor every time it is happening someone says something there is a trigger factor if i get delayed for work there is a exam there is a class i have to do some commitment i go outside there is a social thing or social event i have to interact with someone or these are the trigger factors someone may say right you should know that those are what are the trigger factors then you ask how long this has been happening right so there are two things when you ask how long one thing is how frequent and how long so if you say how long she may say that 15 days one month but this is the this particular phase she may have she may have history of intermittent okay low mood good mood low mood good mood low mood high mood okay so you ask how long you remember that you have been having this symptoms and this emotional turbulence so she may say that few years since 18 years since childhood someone may have teenager because you or marriage or job change or something so you can trace back sometimes there are parental issues sometimes performance pressure in the school and all those things sometimes the job stress sometimes marriage or some change in the circumstances city or some scenario okay what are the seven points we have covered write down all the seven points in the single chat don't write one tick two tick don't do that take time one minute pause everyone will write down seven points you can anuradha my dear write down all the seven things into single chat very good oh very good so arun is very systematic and learning very good so local language is not a point local language is something yeah it's not a point when you ask trigger factors then how long it has been happening how frequently all those things start the beginning okay when it began and everything okay so and when you talk to the client always try to remember the name okay you should have the client's number saved by the name
who is this lenovo the name lenovo please rename yourself and there is someone iphone you know they want to show you know iphone off correct write your name very good very good so people those who are writing in the chat they are paying attention others start attending start paying attention okay yes so arun uh, that's always a good practice to have a separate number and personal number for work and uh, even if someone is like a corporate slave you should have a different number for your manager so that when they call you can block them or you can keep on mute and you should have a separate number for personal life so that that phone is always 24 hours on for emergency purpose same applies for the clients you should it's always a good idea to ambika can you write your question again it got buried in all those things so it's always a good idea to tell the client that what is your working hour okay right so you can tell this initially or you can tell this at the end of your session but include that you say that very good anupama you you always say that these are my working hour these are the times that i give appointment and these are the times i reply to whatsapp i will appreciate if you stick to the time all my whatsapp before 5 pm after that i avoid checking my whatsapp right sometimes some client whatsapp me in the night or middle of the night and then in the morning those clients whatsapp so night whatsapp it got it gets buried so it is always better to whatsapp me during my working hour so that i can reply early okay so the client knows that otherwise some clients are like that they think that if they whatsapp you in the night in the morning you are going to reply so you tell them that you whatsapp me in the morning okay and always a good idea to tell the client that uh, uh, your calling time or consultation times otherwise some clients are like they feel something emotional turbulence in the night or they have a fight with someone or a husband and they immediately call you okay so you tell them you make them realize that you are a human being you have a family and you have your own emotions and your priority is you okay then comes the client right you make it very clear so the client will respect you for this those who do not respect you should remove them from your client list very good so most of the people they are paying attention those who are not paying attention they are my favorite very good because they will score very less marks in the exam very good very good so very good so those who are writing they are good now you have asked about the trigger factors how intense how frequently when it started the story started okay then that helps you to identify what is the emotional trauma all these symptoms anxiety stress depression low mood low confidence these are symptoms they are happening because of some underlying emotional trauma right when you ask when the story started when it started and what happened during that phase of your life what happened during that time it helps you identify what is the root cause of emotional trauma that is very important okay and you need to work not only by providing this you need to work not only by giving them some tips okay that is good if you are able to give them tips right because most of the counselors they are not able to give them tips or they are not able to give the answers to their question but if you are able to do that you are already a good counselor probably top 5 percentile but if you are able to heal those emotional traumas by using certain techniques which you learn in psychotherapy program with nsca then you are one of the top counselors okay so there are techniques to heal emotional traumas there are techniques to replace emotional uh, traumas replace bad memories okay heal that
then at this stage when you have identified the emotional trauma give some pause ask the client you ask some questions right here you have been asking the questions now give the opportunity to the client take a pause okay you breathe you drink some water okay tell the client drink some water take one minute pause you may have some questions ask me okay there are two ways to ask the questions one is she will ask one question you answer second that question the better way is you ask her ask all the questions together and then you give a good answer to all those questions right and you will be able to give good answers to those questions because you are read the book psychology counseling the practical aspect okay you are read the book so you will be able to give all those answers now comes the stage where you will give some practical tips to the client okay okay before giving the practical tips one more stage is there probably we are on step 9th or 10th i think we are on 10th step okay so you will give the importance if they are already if they are under uh, undergoing consultation with the psychiatrist and taking medications okay then you can uh, tell them importance of medications side effects expected medications and you tell them that this psychiatric medication they have a property the property is that beneficial effect will start slowly and it will be visible in 3 weeks okay the side effects will be visible immediately but beneficial effects will increase and side effects will start decreasing it is important that you continue the medications for the better effect and you are not going to continue the medications for lifetime there is going to be a stage where your psychiatrist will reduce your dose or will win off your medications and to reach that stage you need my help you also need counseling yeah so you explain the importance of counselor plus medication both there is a video uh, when what should you answer to the client when the client is asking for stopping the medications you can watch that you already got the link today also and yeah. where that video is there then you come to the tips we should we should we you should give to the client okay now in the tips there are okay so i will take this question from ambika should we discuss other people experience with the client in order to motivate him or her or that's a good idea so other people may be general public people which may not be relevant rather than that if you use some story if you use uh, some inspiring story or inspiring or motivational or uh, someone who has risen from bottom to the top that is something to share okay maybe if that is related to the relevant client you can share but sometimes you know many of the clients in my experience they don't like that if you say that i had a similar client and she went under this and then this they don't like or appreciate it is better to avoid example of another client you can give the example of someone who has been successful or who has fallen and then rise up okay it is always a good idea to give some story okay if you cannot do both of them then it is simple to give the tips to them at least okay so you should try to avoid uh, example of another client and you should absolutely avoid your example okay very good swati so you should and you should absolutely absolutely avoid your example or your story if you have undergone your emotional turbulence okay <laughs> don't start sharing your emotional turbulence with the client you know i also had similar problem with <laughs> <laughs> you can choose these are the recommendations okay 
So it's not necessary to follow all recommendations. These are recommendations from me. You can choose to use your own style, right? Good question, Vina. So Vina has asked a very practical question. You know, if you give some tips to the client, if you tell them to exercise, they are not going to follow. It's very natural. And that's why they have come to you. That's why they have, because they have some emotional turbulence, right? So if you are into corporate training or soft skills training, or if you are into coaching side, then you get client who's motivated, who wants, who has aspiration to grow. Okay, that's a different business. Right. When you have counseling or psychology counseling, or you, if you are emotional turbulence client, okay, they don't have motivation. If you have a depression client, that client does not have motivation to comb the hair or brush their teeth or have a bath in the bath, okay, or get up from the bed. If the client is anxious, they don't have motivation to do anything. Sometimes they are just sitting in a shock, or uh, they are anxious to do anything. Okay, they are overthinking. Right. So you cannot suddenly change them. You cannot tell a depressed or anxious client, no, go start doing exercise, join a gym. They may pay for the fees, but they will not join the gym. Because you are a good counselor, they may end up buying the sports shoes for running, but they will not wear it. <laughs> right. So buying the sports shoes is different. Wearing is different. And actual running is different. So you tell them to start what you think where you can start right a simple thing may be a walk in the garden taking your dog to the garden going with your partner to the garden or just walking on the street okay or you know, doing some gardening some aerobic exercise or just walking around your house helping your spouse in the kitchen if it's a male client right helping your children for studies or just asking them how it is going on, helping your child learn some craft or new activity. Because when you do that, you also get involved. You also try to assimilate, you also try to learn something. When you do that, your neuronal synopsis, new synapses are formed. There is a new chemical is released, happy hormone is released. What are the four happy hormones? Dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, endorphin so when you whatever you do at the end of your session your objective is that client should be able to do certain activity that will release the happy hormone we will have one session on how to release the happy hormones for each of these hormones there is a different way to release we will learn that my dear gunjal will learn that okay so sometimes you know when you have a child as a client actual the client is the parent because you have to tell the parent what things you need to do. And sometimes, you know, the issue is not with the child. Issue is with the parent. And the self-diagnosed ADSD, autism child, parents say that my child has a learning disability. How do you know? Yeah, because child is scoring less. <laughs> that is not a learning disability. <laughs> that is poor parenting or poor teaching or poor schooling, whatever you want to say. <laughs> okay, so you need to put efforts for that. Very good. Abhishek, good work. Abhishek, can you WhatsApp me your email ID, please? No, not on this chart, on my WhatsApp. Please do that. What are the points we have covered? Who will write all the points in one chat? Oh, very good. So, <laughs> so people know that sir is going to ask this question already typed and ready. Very good. I like you so much, Mona Lisa. Oh, very good, Mithun. Swati, you call me tomorrow. You are my favorite. No. <laughs> Just for no reason, you call me. Very good. So the seven point, like the intensity, duration, and all the things we are asking, it is to identify what is the emotional trauma. Okay, from the story. 
All right. So the last one. Now questions. You ask the questions. Take a minute to phrase your questions. Then write your questions. If you are your video is on, then you can unmute also. Those who do not have video, they can write in the chat. <laughs> Good question, Dr. Punam. What are the tips we can give to the client? For each condition, there are different tips. Open the book, read, and in that you will find all the tips you should give to the client. Sometimes these tips are going to be overlapping because the symptoms are going to be overlapping. Don't focus on the diagnosis. Always focus on the emotional turbulence. Always focus on what the symptoms the client faces. Okay. The client may say that I always have a palpitation. I always fear something. I always think continuously. So work on that. Tell them what should they do for that. Rather than, oh my God, you have a GAD and you are going to live this hopeless life forever. So, you know, that is a label they put. And you should try to remove that label. Now at the end. So... Dr. Zenada, you are a psychiatrist. For psychiatrists, they can they are going to write the prescription. But sometimes psychiatrists decide that prescription is not required, and the client says, No, no, I want prescription. So <laughs> multivitamin, you can write. Okay. So probably you can write multivitamin there. <laughs> if not a psychiatrist, then prescription is out of the question. Good, Mariam. Good answer. Unless you are a psychiatrist, MD or diploma psychiatrist, you cannot write prescription even if you are PhD or MSc. Okay, you cannot write medications. Even if you are a homeopath or if you are an MBBS doctor, psychiatric medications are not allowed to be written by you. You should avoid that. Before you end the session, you want what do you want? You want the client to come back to you. Okay. So you tell you have you tell the client what they should. Yes. So you should uh... <laughs> I will take this question. Okay. So if you are a medical doctor, then you write whatever you can write prescription. Okay. You should avoid psychiatric medications. If you are a PhD doctor or allied medicine doctor, then you should not write even multivitamin. Because if you see on the multivitamin uh, tablet, the packaging, they are written Schedule H drug. Schedule H means it needs prescription form registered medical practitioner and that registered medical practitioner is MBBS. Okay. So now Falguni has asked a very interesting question. If a client insists on you writing a medication or like they want some medication, okay. Typically these people they are already having some self-medication. Okay. They might be already taking something, right? Something they are taking. You ask, are you presently taking some medication? Okay. They will say, yes, ma'am. Actually, you know, I'm taking this trica or prosolom. Something, something they will say. Sometimes they will say, no, just multivitamin, some other and something. Sometimes they will say they're taking crocine or some pain or something, something else. Okay. For Right. If they are not taking anything or whether they are taking or not taking anything, if you want to convince them 
right? That medication is not required. Then you should say that typically psychiatric medications are prescribed by a psychiatrist. And every medication has a side effect. And psychiatric medications are known to have more side effects. And you know, beneficial effect will start after three weeks. But side effect will start immediately, right? So it is always better to avoid medications in your scenario. And I if you believe that this is not a major or hopeless case, or if you don't need to refer to a psychiatrist, you tell the client, you don't need medication, my dear. Okay. You come to me. By talking to me, you will feel good. By my consultation, you will feel good 50% times. Okay. We will see some sessions. And if you don't feel good, right? Then maybe I will myself tell you that you may need to go to a psychiatrist. Okay. You are convinced, Falguni? Others also convinced? Correct. So, Dr. Dr. Swati, counseling is an art. There are people who are PhD. They do PhD in the counseling, thinking that one day they will become the best counselor. It's not that. Okay. So, PhD, you will get the degree. Any degree you do, unless you have an inner art, you are not good. Okay. There are some people who are probably with the alien background, some people who are less qualified, okay, or some people who are just graduate in psychology or masters in psychology, but they are very good. They have the art. People like to talk to you. You talk something sense, you talk something wisdom, right? And yeah, people feel good after talking to you. They feel motivated. So you're a good counselor. <laughs> Dr. Zanada, she has come to you on the second visit. It means you already are a good counselor. Now you ask her what is the issue and all those things. We will see as you progress on certain classes, you will see. Correct. The typically, counseling session is for 60 minutes. Okay. It can extend. Sometimes it extends 15 minutes, 30 minutes. It's okay. You need to give some flexibility. If you have a lined up second session, then you can tell the client 10 minutes before that, okay, in 10 minutes, we are going to wrap up. But you also have to wrap up actually. And it's okay, even if you get late to the next session, it's still okay. Because you are a human being, you are not a robot. You are supposed to fail. You are supposed to get late. You are supposed to do mistakes. Don't worry. Don't be very rigid on yourself. Be soft. It's okay. Do mistakes. Fail sometime, trial, error. It's okay. You are still good. At least you believe that you are good. <laughs> Otherwise, you will start needing, you will start, uh, you know, you will start visiting a counselor. <laughs> Before the session ends, you should tell the client why they need to visit you again, when they should visit. There should be a clear timeline when which day you are giving the appointment and what is the time. Okay. So the time is again mutually decided and the day is mutually decided. It can be twice a week, thrice a week. It can be after two days. It can be after one week. It can be next day, whichever you feel, whichever the client feels or mutually agreed upon. One hour, you can increase more. Yeah. <laughs> now it is time for you to ask questions. Okay. Sometimes, you know, the client keeps, Sapna, I understood what you're asking. So Sapna has a very relevant question. Sometimes the client keeps on talking. They keep on talking all the Rama and Mahabharat stories, ages pass, months pass, and you are just sitting there for a few hundred years. And then you become suddenly old. <laughs> so it happens. So you tell the client, okay, cut short, tell me something brief. Give me some examples. Okay, give me three examples only. 
top three examples. Sometimes the client, if you ask example, they will start, you know, example one, example two, example three, 20 examples are there. So you say top three examples. Okay. What has happened in the last month? What has happened in the last week? You ask in this way. Okay. So it becomes concise. You understand the story, right? Why are you asking the story? Because you want to identify what is the root cause? What is the problem? What is the trigger factor? Right? So you can tell the client to avoid those trigger factors or how to deal with those trigger factors next time. Yes, smoothie, very important. Very Im good. So don't become insane. Okay. Don't lose your sanity while helping the insane. There is a chapter in the book. Because your number one priority is you. You are a human being, you have a heart, you have emotions, you have a brain. You have to protect yourself. Right. Sometimes I, I get call from some students, and those are very sincere students. And they are very empathetic by nature. They say, sir, when I talk to some client, if she is crying, I start crying. If she feels something, I also feel. I get disturbed. Then you should evaluate your career path. Okay. So, or you will need to work on yourself to protect your heart. Good question, Sunaina. So when the client goes in loop and loop, talking and again and again, so more likely you know the diagnosis, but you are not going to label it. Okay. Sometimes the client may have OCD or GAD or something. So you repeat that. You say that, okay, I have heard that. I understood that. Now you can talk of something else, right? Because, you know, we have a time limit. So this session is for one hour. Now this much time is remaining. I really want to help you. I want to tell you what you should be doing. So I want to hear more about you. I want to hear the next story. I want to hear the next example, right? So you have the option. You can repeat your same segment for one hour, right? And I will feel, wow, there is a broken tape record which is working in front of me. Or you can tell me a new story, a new song, so that I can tell you how to dance. <laughs> so try, don't be very serious with the client, okay? Right? So when you tell the client, you know, some uh, mischievous way, sometimes client like, okay, sometimes actually, yeah, that person they don't like. So it's okay, you refer that to someone else, those who are like, <laughs> okay, so, so they like the serious counselors. So you tell that those serious are good there. What is a should counselor take counseling too? Um, if you need help, okay. Actually, the question what Abhishek is asking is very deep meaning, right? Should counselors take counseling or do counselors need counseling? We are human beings. We have a heart. We have emotions. We have our own emotional turbulence. And sometimes we also feel low mood. Sometimes we may have our own conditions. You may have your own diagnosis. Right? You may have your own condition. You may need help. When you think that, now when to take help? Very simple, one word answer. When should you take help? Dysfunction. If you are having certain symptoms, certain emotional turbulence, and you are able to maintain functional role in the society, okay, no worries. You are doing good. But if dysfunction starts, you need help. What is a dysfunction? Dysfunction means you are not able to contribute to the society. You are not able to provide your role to your family, to your work, to your business, to your job, to yourself, to your children, to your spouse, to your relatives. Okay, That is the time you need help. One word diagnosis, dysfunction. right? And all of us go through our share of emotional traumas, our experiences. Don't hesitate to take help. And any of you, all of the students, if you need any help, don't hesitate to WhatsApp me. I will provide one of the counselor from my team. And because you are my student, my counselor will not charge you. That is my principle. Because the student comes from a vulnerable position. If any student says that, sir, I need some counseling help, I provide a counselor to you. Don't worry. You take as many sessions as you want. <laughs> no restriction. It happens. You're going to face. And disturbance, emotional disturbance in daily life is a part of your life. It is going to happen. 
direct my session. Nithi, I knew you are very strong. You don't need direct my session. <laughs> and you know, the another way to feel good is by helping people. The best is when you help people, when you help people who are undergoing emotional turbulence, they give you appreciation. They tell you, ma'am, after talking to you, I feel good. You actually feel good because you release happy hormones. Right? So objective of doing every work is you release happy hormones in your brain. If you can release your happy hormones, very good. You can release happy hormones to others. So there are two questions, very important. So Rajni has asked a very relevant question. Sometimes a client is not comfortable asking, talking about the past. You should not dig up that. Okay. There are three types of emotional traumas. One is, we will see in the next class. Why? So that that is there. The fire is there. I have to attend next class. I should not miss. Okay. And you remember what you need to study in the next class. You have to remind me. I am going to forget. I have a short term memory loss. So you remind me what are the three types of emotional traumas and how to deal with that. Okay. I will answer that question next class. Now I will answer. Dr. Swati, can you ask your question again? It got, you know, buried inside all those chat. So please ask your question right then again. Okay. Now Sunina has asked one more question. How many sessions a counselor should take in a day? That is a financial decision, right? And that is an emotional decision. If your emotional capacity is 10 sessions per day, you should take 10. If your emotional capacity is one session per day, you should take one, right? I know few counselors who have a target, they will take only one session per day. And from that one session, either they charge 1,000 or 2,000, they are satisfied. There are counselors who take two sessions in a day and they have kept a target. In these two sessions, I have to earn 10,000 rupees per day. Good. That's good. And then there are some counselors who have a different mindset. Okay. I want to earn 10,000 in a day, but I can charge only 1,000 because that is the limit of their confidence. Okay. That is a limit of their skills, their competencies. Right. That's why they are able to charge this much amount. But the target is to earn 5,000 or 10,000. So they will need to do more sessions. Okay. So number of sessions is decided by what is your fees, what is your competence, and what is your emotional bank balance? And how, what is your revenue target? And there are some who are like, okay, if I get one client, if I can help one person today, I'm satisfied. Happy counselor. <laughs> you are a happy counselor if you are one like that. Okay. Counseling of problem creating family members can be done. Yeah, I do not understand this question. Dr. Swati, you call me tomorrow and explain me. <clears throat> okay, probably there are some family members, they create a problem and the client says that, can you explain them? No, if they don't want to talk to you, you cannot explain them. <laughs> you cannot do anything. You can explain or do counseling to the person who has come to you. You can probably tell this poor client or the victim how to manage both scenarios. Very good, Dr. Sheeta. You have attended. You are attentive previous class. In psychotherapy, you learn how to manage all those emotional traumas, how to heal different types of emotional traumas. Okay. Any question? Now I will send the link for those who are doing client acquisition or internship with me. Okay. They will get a new link. And we will start in next five minutes for those. Okay. Please ask some questions.
we'll take next time thank you anjum so we will uh, those who are doing internship they will get a new link they can join with the new link in 5 minutes okay read the book be in touch with your mentor as per the time allocated if i am your mentor my time is monday to friday 1 to 5 pm no whatsapp after 5 pm unless there is an emergency and if you have emergency call the nearest hospital thank you anupama see you then so i'm sending the new link